pastor in Kentucky has been arrested in what has been a two-year-long investigation. What happened? What's the reaction? We'll dive in and discuss in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you and reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. And for someone like me, well, that's kind of my only option. Hey, speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story about how I went blind and how I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all, which I include a link to in the description section of all my videos, so that's there for you. Also, if God puts it on your heart to do so, consider making a generous donation to my ministry to support what I do. A couple different ways you could do that. One easy way, just click the super thanks button on the YT video here to make your contribution that way. Or you can become a premium member of Not By Sight News. You can join my Patreon today for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash Not By Sight News, link in the description. Joining Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit my main YT platform. Also there, you'll get some exclusive links to the topics we discuss. Some I have to include on Patreon for obvious reasons, but also there you can comment censorship-free on all videos and even send me DMs. I encourage you to check it out, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. It was all the way back on March 13th, 2021, where there was a fire to the Greater New Hope Community Church However, it was occupied previously by a historic Jewish synagogue, and the building, you have to understand, has been around for over 100 years. Now, a lot of changes have been made since, and uh, you know those occupying the synagogue have since moved now to a new location, and Greater New Hope Community Church, which is now called Renewed Hope Community Church, uh, was the last ones to be occupying that building. However, when the fire took place uh, back on March 13th, 2021, uh, the church had not been using that building. It actually had been vacant for quite some time. And strangely enough, you know, a week before, you know, or actually a week after the fire took place, the building was actually scheduled to be auctioned off and sold. So funny how this fire occurred a week prior to that. Now, when the fire first took place, it took about 70 firefighters to put this thing out because the roof ended up collapsing at the time that they got there. One of the firefighters actually suffered a minor injury in trying to get that blaze put out. But one thing that they you know, were checking on was, you know, was there any electricity to the building? There wasn't any electricity to the building. Was there any storms? You know, was there lightning? There wasn't anything like that at all. So immediately foul play was suspected in this. And now here we are. Two years later, and police have finally made an arrest in this case. And of all people, the senior pastor of Renewed Hope Community Church, Jonathan Mullins, was arrested on March 11th and has been charged with first-degree arson. Now, let me say this. If he's convicted, he could be facing up to life in prison. I think even at the, you know... The, le the least of the sentences, he would be facing 20 to 50 years in prison, but could be life in prison if convicted. Now, police, you know, releasing this report and informing the public of the arrest here of Mullins did not say what evidence led them to his arrest. However, whatever they found was credible and they linked him here to this fire. This is extremely disappointing. You know, knowing that this fire occurred by the own pastor of the church, why would he do this? There are more questions and answers right now as it comes to Mullen's actions. If the church had already been, you know, occupying in a, you know, in another building at that point and hadn't been at this one, you know, was he trying to, you know, take this thing down before the auction for some reason? Did he not want the building to be sold to somebody else? Did he have respect for the synagogue that was there prior and he didn't want to see this going to somebody else? If it wasn't going to be his church, of course. So again, a lot of questions here. And, you know, those that were, you know, members of the synagogue when it was occupying that building, they have expressed they are still mourning the loss of this building two years later. But now news of the arrest of Mullins has left people scratching their heads even more, especially again with him being the pastor of the church. So we will see what else comes out with this. I welcome your thoughts, especially if you're somebody... If you either attended the synagogue or you attended the church when it was, you know, under Greater New Hope Community Church and now, of course, Renewed Hope, I would love to hear from you. And especially if you're, you know, somebody that uh, is, you know, currently a part of the congregation here of Mullins, 
What do you think about this, his arrest? And do you see him, you know, spend the rest of his life in prison? What are some of your thoughts as well on why he might have done this? I'd love to hear from you. Um, and I will have more information on this in the description section of this video. What I want to do right now, this is something I do on all these videos. That's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. Really, what this is is an altar call. And I've been doing this since 2016. No matter what it is that I talk about and cover in the church and all the shenanigans and exposing the wolves, we always want to point people to Jesus because we are in the last days and Christ is coming very soon. This world is in turmoil, it's in chaos, and people are looking for the Lord. So if you're somebody right now who's watching this and you know, you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer that you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget, the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, link in the description, or just hit the super thanks button on the YT video here where you can make a contribution that way. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.